All right, folks, I'm Rich Folley. This is PBS Book View Now. We're at the Miami Book Fair. It's Sunday, the third day of our coverage here in Miami. You can start to hear the Miami Book Fair in the background now. There's bands, there's people everywhere. It's wonderful. And we're sitting right now with Matt Phelan, who's the author of a new graphic novel called Snow White. It's a reimagining of Snow White. Welcome. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. It's an incredible and beautiful book. What's fascinating to me about it is that you took the fairy tale of Snow White and you dropped it into 1930s era, era New York Depression and created this new world around Snow White. Talk about just the idea, first of all, about where to put this new Snow White. Yeah, well, the idea first came to me, I, I don't know, somewhere in my brain, I connected apple peddlers from the Great Depression with Snow White and the stepmother giving out the apple. And at first, it was almost like a little game. I was just like, oh, that's an interesting thing. So what if Snow White's in the Great Depression? So who's the queen? Well, she could be the queen of the Ziegfeld Follies. The king could be the king of Wall Street. And it, it started out as sort of a game, but as I got on uh, playing with that, I just, it became more and more interesting to me to tell that story in the Great Depression and how setting it in that time period changes the story and then maybe gives you a chance to sort of bring up elements that are in the story that maybe did not come out in other versions of it. Yeah, there's some really cool elements that you can only find in 1930s or so. It's like yeah. the fact that it's a ticker tape and not a magic mirror and things like that. Yeah. When you were reimagining it, talk about the ideas of like that were just coming down and, and the ways you could kind of translate an old fairy tale into another era. Yeah, well, one of the things that, that I kind of threw out from this version is the whole uh, Ferris in the land, which is a, you know, a major part of the story. But since I had already made the queen uh, a Broadway star, I didn't think that, I mean, she would always been surrounded by young starlets. So I didn't think that was a very good motivation for her, that Snow White was prettier than she is. So I, the mirror left, you know, I had to toss the mirror out. And the ticker tape, I need, still need something that could give her this, you know, to speak to her and push her down the thing. The ticker tape was the perfect uh, object of that time where, you know, people's fortunes would come through on that. So that sort of made a lot of sense. And the other thing I kind of changed that was a big one was the seven dwarfs became uh, seven street boys. They're, they're orphans running around the streets, runaways. And uh, once those two elements actually came into place, that's really when I started uh, being excited about how I could change the story. Yeah, there's the, 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 the drawing style. We don't have drawings to put on screen, but it's, 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 there's a darkness to it, and there's an, and there's an old era to it, and, it, and they're incredible drawings. I mean, really evocative of the time. We talked earlier how you've done other things from that era. There's mm. a beautiful Dust Bowl book that you've done in the past. Um, that is incredible, and, and it's an area you're drawn to. What is it about that time that you find so evocative? I, you know, I, I love everything about that time. I do keep finding myself going back to it. I love, I love the movies of that time. I love the music. I love the fashion. There's just about everything about that. I, I think I could trace it back to I grew up watching a lot of old movies. My dad's a big movie fan, and I grew up watching the original King Kong and you know Errol Flynn and Buster Keaton movies and stuff like that. So that, that has always been something that I've really resonated with me. And I just keep finding myself putting, going back to that. And for Snow White, I looked at a lot of films from the early 30s because I wanted the book to be black and white, but like a black and white film, which wasn't strictly black and white. It's really just this, these wonderful murky, moody grays and stuff like that. And I wanted to try to get that into the artwork. Yeah, you can definitely feel it as you're reading through it. Yeah. The other thing that's interesting about this graphic novel is that it's very, there's not much text. I mean, you really let yeah. the pictures do most of the talking for you. And, and that presents a challenge, obviously, to the artist. And uh, it, talk about, I mean, I'm curious about, as you're telling a story, did you think about it at the beginning? There was not going to be any descriptive text for the most part, and you're going to let it all be pictures. It's sort of your style, but yeah. explain that for us. I, I do. I always, I always like to have the, the pictures tell as much of the story as possible. As an illustrator, uh, writing a graphic novel kind of plays that strength of telling the, the story through the pictures. I actually write a full manuscript before I draw. So even though I know I'm going to have these silent passages, which is how I kind of like to refer to them rather than wordless and you know, silent, uh, I write all that down. So that's all from the beginning. I know that's going to happen. And it's, it, for me, it, not only is it it's an interesting challenge, I think there's a way, there's uh, almost like a, it can st create like almost like a dreamlike uh, rhythm to a book if you're letting the pictures tell the story. And that's uh, something I've always kind of been interested in all of my books. There's always sections like that. And Snow White probably has the most. You, uh, you talked earlier about 1930s movies being an inspiration to you. And you, you see these directors oftentimes framing everything. What is it for an artist? How are you frame and think about 
the images and the panels themselves and, and how do you put that together when you're not looking at something naturally that's in front of you but you're sort of envisioning it in your head? Yeah, well you know I actually didn't, st I didn't go to art school, I studied uh, film and theater in, in, in college and um, I think the filmmaking, the setting up the images, uh, the composition, it's that almost a leap to instinct and everything I do and I approach it almost like an actor approaches things so I, I'm always thinking about how the characters are feeling uh, in that moment, what are they thinking? And that kind of affects how they stand. And for me, then it affects how I'm going to frame that, you know, where they're going to be in the composition. So for me, it's almost all, all organic rather than a mechanical thing. And I just sort of see it in my head. But I think the heart of it is thinking about what are these characters feeling at this moment as the key to get into it. We've had so many graphic novelists and graphic artists come into our set this year. It seems like more than ever before. Yeah. It's exploding and you're in the middle of something and then there's a wave happening and more and more people are coming up. Obviously, uh, for a young uh, person in the 70s or 80s, it was comic books, which right. is a little bit different um, and heavily superhero infused. Yes. And, and now, though, so much more storytelling is happening with, with illustration. What do you make of this sort of growing phenomenon? Where is it going, and and will it ever stop? I mean, how far well, can it go? I don't think it. I don't think it ever will stop. I went to see uh, Gene Yang speak this morning, and he he brought up that March Book Three just won the National Book Award. Right. And he said, you know, graphic novels are here. We're that's we're here. It's there. And I think it's very exciting because it's it's what it is is a medium for telling a story. You can tell any kind of story you want using words and pictures and panels. So. I think right now it just seems wide open. There's going to be more people, novelists, coming in trying this. You know, we're going to get all kinds of stories because now people seem to be very open to anything. I love superheroes too, but it's not, it's not you know, be all end all. So any kind of story can be told with this medium, which right. I think is very exciting. And Jean Lun Yang, who's the new uh, or the most recent uh, 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 ambassador to young people's yes. literature through the Library of Congress. And, and you also mentioned March, which is representative John Lewis's retelling of his own personal story in the civil rights movement right. with Nate Powell, who's an incredible illustrator, yes. and his assistant, Andrew Iden, and his co-writer, uh, Andrew Aiden, yeah. he's a great guy. Mm -hmm. And that, that you're seeing more and more collaboration. What you talked about yes. of more traditional novelists or writers coming to the fold, and you're seeing these hybrids. Uh, mm -hmm. Kate DeCamillo, for instance, with um, Floor you know, and Ulysses, yeah, yeah. Floor and Ulysses, which is half novel, half you know, uh, graphic novel. Right. That hybrid seems to be growing more interesting, especially as you see yeah. people experimenting with the platform who've never experimented with it before. Right. That's, it just seems like another area where it's going to explode. That's actually what I'm most excited about doing now. So Snow White is my, my fourth graphic novel. And uh, now I'm kind of interested in doing, like you said, so what, what else can we do? What can a, a hybrid of, of text and images do? I think I'll also look back to Brian Selznick's uh, invention of Hugo Cabret as when that book came out, everyone said, what is this? You yeah. know, and uh, I think that's very exciting. And it, it seems that publishing is very open to that. Uh, readers are open. Kids are certainly open to it. Uh, and I think it's a very exciting time to be making these books. Yeah, and I think what the other people who are really open to it are the writers who've never done it before. I mean, yeah. it's like in music where you see collaborations now driving a lot of what's really popular in music and people saying, I like what you're doing. Let's team up and do something and bring something together. Sometimes totally unrelated sounds that come together in music. Yeah. You're now seeing the same thing with writers who are experimenting and recognizing that they need to reach out and partner with somebody to bring that illustrative element or on the other side, the the writing element. Into yeah, I think, I, I think there's just so many combinations and we haven't even seen the kind of books that might come out of this, right. you know, which is, which is amazing when you think about it. Which is not to say though that the graphic novel in the graphic artist community that you live in isn't super tight and has like its oh, yeah. own sort of community going on, all the cons that happen around the country and all the other events mm -hmm. uh, that you travel to and, and do a lot with. Talk, talk to me a little bit about how that community is has, you know how it's a supportive element to all of you. It's a through. it's a very supportive community. I would say both both the comics community and also the especially the children's literature community because I do picture books as well. So I'm sort of in that world, and they're both very uh, inclusive. And I think what's what the core of it is we all there's not one style. There's all kinds of styles. So I don't feel like people ever feel they're in competition with something. We're all very supportive of each other's books because it's like, wow, I, I never would have thought to do that. That's amazing what you're doing. So it's, it's a very uh, tight group of people and they're, uh, and they're wonderful. One of the great things coming to these festivals, you get to hang out with these people. You see maybe once or twice right. a year, you know? And uh, it's a very supportive uh, group. It doesn't feel very cutthroat. Everyone's very excited 
about what we're doing, and then the more, you know, the more the better yeah. kind of thing. So now the graphic novels are here, as yeah. Gene Yang said the other day or this morning. Um, is it a word that we still need? Because you talk about children's books and graphic novels and mm -hmm. books and these hybrids. They're kind of just books now. I mean, it, just books. Now, that you, yeah. now that you're here, do you still need to be here as graphic novels, or can you just move to the next level? That's, I would love that, where they just become books. Uh, my th my books have always been I've always written specifically for middle grade readers and I look at them as novels so I would love to get that's the next I think that's the next stop they're yeah. just books yeah well, we're on our way yeah uh, well Matt Phelan thank you for being here Snow White your graphic novel beautiful evocative highly recommended thanks so much for joining us thank today. you thank you very yeah. much.